Hello friends, so here we are with another question on uh, KVL and KCL application. So this is the circuit and we have been asked to find the value of the current flowing through this 2 ohm resistor. Okay, again KVL and KCL, that's it. Okay, so we have uh, redrawn the circuit where we'll be doing all the calculations and assignment, current assignment, everything. So let us say uh, this uh, current flowing through this 20 ohm resistor is let's say I1 plus I2. Why I've written I1 plus I2, we'll see. Here at this node, it gets split. Here let's say it is I1. Here let's say it is I2 like this. Let's say this current flowing through this 2 ohm resistor, let's call it I3. At this node, I1 is entering, I3 is exiting. So, this current will be I1 minus I3. This. And here at this node, I2 is entering, I1 minus I3 is entering. So, this will be I1 plus I2 minus I3. This like this. So now we have assigned all the currents. Now let us assign the polarities. This will be plus minus. 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 Okay, like this. Okay. So now uh, let us uh, apply KVL. Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let us apply KVL in this left loop like this. Okay, KVL 1, let's call it. So we'll apply KVL. So this will be KVL 1 will be 20 minus 16 I1 because current I1 is flowing through 16 ohm minus 2 I3 is equal to 0. That implies 16 I1 plus 2 I3 is equal to 20. We just brought 16 I1, 2 I3 on one side. This is the first equation. So our objective here is to find I3 because it has been asked. Our objective is this. this this is our objective current through 2 ohm resistor which is I3 okay so we'll be dealing the circuit only in that way to minimize the number of equations okay so now let us apply KVL in this loop okay in this loop so here in the right hand loop when we apply KVL it will be let's say we apply it in this direction KVL2 in this right hand loop this side KVL2 starting from this 2 ohm resistor it will be 2I3 because we are moving from minus to plus minus 32 into I1 minus I3 minus 20 is equal to 0. That implies minus 32 I1 plus it will be plus 32 I3 plus 2 I3 that will be 34 I3 is equal to 20. This, this is equation 2. Okay, this. So now, in order to cancel one variable, if we pay attention to equation 1 and equation 2, if we multiply equation 1 with 2, okay, equation 1 with 2, we will get 32 I1 
plus 4 i 3 is equal to 40 and there we add with it equation 2 which is equal to minus 32 i 1 plus 34 i 3 is equal to 20. So, that will be i 1 will get cancelled 32 i 1 minus 32 i 1 this will be 38 i 3 and this will be 60. So that implies i 3 which is which we want ok current flowing through 2 ohm resistor that is equal to 60 by 38. 60 by 38 if you calculate it is coming around 60 it is coming around 1.5789 ok so it is 1.58 ampere 1.5789 ampere or nearly equal to 1.58 ampere that is equal to I3 which is the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor this Okay, so this is the answer the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. So, here see again here our objective was only to find the current through the 2 ohm resistor. So, here uh, we chose the KVL equations in such a way that the final result will be in terms of I3. Okay, so here uh, if it would have been asked to find the current in the 16 ohm resistors all the resistors then we had to apply KVL in this middle loop also this one ok that also we had to do ok but here that was not asked it was only asked to find this this I3 so our objective is only to bring all the equations in terms of I3 so that only I3 is left behind and then we will get the value of I3. So, deliberately I chose this left loop and right loop. We got the two equations. The next objective was to cancel I1 to bring the equation in terms of I3. We did that. We got the equation in terms of I3 and we got the result. So, this is how you can tackle the problem in a systematic way so that you can reduce the number of equations, save a lot of time save a lot of hassle and get the result quickly ok. But here if it would have been asked to find the current through all these resistors then there would have been three equations. The middle loop equation also we would have got we would have got the value of I3 then there would have been some relationship using all these current dependent relationships we would have got the value of I1, I2, I3 and all the individual branch currents. But it was not asked here only I current flowing through 2 ohm so that is why this way. Okay. Hello friends, so here is another question on uh, KVL and KCL application. So this is the circuit diagram which we have here and uh, it has been asked to find the value of these two unknown resistances R1 and R2 and there are some conditions here ok different cases a b c so for each case we have to find out the value of r1 and r2 for case a the two currents that are specified i1 and i2 they are given uh, in uh, b also it is the same but in this case one of the currents is in opposite direction because it has been mentioned it is discharging first case both are charging so the current is in the same direction as it is specified and the third case is when I1 is equal to 0. So, in all the three cases we have to find out the values of R1 and R2. So, first uh, we have to write the KVL equations ok that is very important. So, first assignment of the polarities here the current is flowing from plus to minus I1 plus I2 through 2 ohm like this 
I1 is flowing through R1 plus minus, I2 is flowing through R2 plus minus. Okay. This is the polarity. So this is let us say it is the KVL equation for loop 1, the left loop and this let us say it is the KVL equation for the right side loop, KVL equation 2. So, now let us write the KVL equations, KVL 1 for the left loop. So, this is 110 minus 2 into I1 plus I2 minus I1 R1 minus 80 is equal to 0 or we can say that that implies 2 into I1 plus I2 plus I1 R1 is equal to 30. We just took this into the right side, so the sign got changed and this is or it is like this. Okay, This is the equation, let us keep it this way, we will further simplify it when we put the values. Okay, This is the first equation. Okay. Now, we will apply KVL in the right side loop, okay, KVL in the right side loop. So, it is KVL 2. So, here it will be 80 for 80 volt plus I1 R1 because we are moving from negative to positive through R1 polarity as it is assigned minus I2 R2 minus 50 is equal to 0. That implies here it will be if we uh, further simplify it, it will be I2 R2 minus I1 R1 is equal to 30 this we just took it to the right hand side i2 r2 minus i1 r1 is equal to 30 so this is the second equation that we have got this is the second equation so now we'll put these values according to each of the three cases to get the results so case a They say when I1 is equal to 4 ampere, I2 is equal to 6 ampere, both are charging. It means I1 is equal to plus 4 ampere, I2 is equal to plus 6 ampere. Okay, this. So now we'll put the values in equation 1. So it will be 2 into 4 plus 6 plus 4 I 1 is equal to 30. Okay, this that implies here uh, 4 into uh, it is R 1, 4 it is not I 1, it is R 1, sorry by mistake I have written here I1, it is R1, 4 R1 is equal to 30. That implies 2 into 10 plus 4 R1 is equal to 30. That implies 4 R1 is equal to 30 minus 20 which is equal to 10 that implies R1 is equal to 10 by 4 which is equal to 2.5 ohm. So, we have got the value of R1 which is equal to 2.5 ohm. Now, this is the third value that we have got. 
now we have to substitute values of i1 i2 and this r1 in equation 2 and we'll get the result so it is i2 r2 i2 is how much 6 ampere 6 r2 minus i1 which is 4 and r1 which is 2.5 is equal to 30 that implies 6 r2 is equal to 30 plus 10 that implies r2 is equal to 40 by 6 which is equal to 6.67 ohm so r2 is equal to 6.67 ohm so this is the result r1 and r2 for case a same uh, we have to do for uh, case b where i1 is equal to 2 ampere case b i1 is equal to 2 ampere discharging which means it will be minus 2 ampere because it is discharging so it will flow in the opposite direction it is specified i1 is equal to 2 ampere discharging i2 is equal to 20 ampere charging so i2 will be plus 220 ampere i2 will be plus 20 ampere so the same thing we will have to substitute it in different values so we will substitute these values i1 is equal to minus 2 ampere and i2 is equal to 20 ampere in each of these two equations so it will be for the first equation 2 2 into minus 20, 2 plus 20 minus 2 r1 is equal to 30 that implies 2 into 18 minus 2 r1 is equal to 30 that implies 36 minus 2 r1 is equal to 30 that implies 6 minus 30 divided by 2 is equal to r1 that implies r1 is equal to 3 ohm the first value we have got r1 is equal to 3 ohm for case b so now we'll substitute the values in equation 2 so here it will be 20 r2 then it is minus i1 r1 so it will be minus of minus 2 so it will be 2 into r1 which is 3 minus r1 that is equal to 30 that implies r2 is equal to 30 minus 6 by 20 which is equal to 24 by 20 which is equal to 1.2 1.2 so for case b with the conditions given r2 is equal to 1.2 this is case b then we have case c when i1 is equal to 0 ampere okay case c i1 is equal to 0 ampere only that is given i1 is equal to 0 ampere so we have to put it first in equation 1 okay i1 is equal to 0 ampere so it will be only 2 i2 is equal to 30 ampere because i1 will be 0 i1 will be 0 here here i1 will become 0 and only will be left with 2 i2 is equal to 30 okay so i2 will be 15 ampere 2 i2 is equal to 30 that implies i2 is equal to 15 ampere 
then after getting i2 we will substitute it in equation 2 so it will be i2 r2 is equal to 30 i2 r2 is equal to 30 minus i1 r1 i1 is 0 so it will be i2 r2 is equal to 30 that implies r2 is equal to 2 ohm we have got the value of r2 now here after getting the value of r2 okay here we cannot get r1 because i1 is 0 here so there is no way we can get the value of r1 okay because i1 is 0 so this is here r2 is equal to 2 ohm and we have got i2 is equal to 15 ampere for case c okay this because nowhere everywhere there is r1 is present it is combined with i1 so there will not be any non zero you know coefficient for us to get r1 okay so only r2 we have got r2 is equal to 2 ohm for this case c i1 is equal to 0 ampere so this is another i i should say it's a very simple question but it involved a lot of equations three cases are there so it's a lengthy one so this type of questions can also be there okay